Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, what an amazing year 2017 has turned out to be for Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency space. Let's take a look back through the year that was, the news events and occurrences that drove the markets in 2017. I also want to make a few predictions for 2018, things I think are likely to occur. So I've been in this space since 2012. The first half of the year was relatively tame with the market cap starting off under $20 billion. We then started to see a pick up in price and interest from the general community throughout the middle of the year and certainly the latter half of the year. It was a rocky road, a number of corrections along the way, but if you followed the channel, you know I was predicting a monster rally into the end of the year. We certainly got that with the total market cap of cryptocurrency surpassing $600 billion from those humble beginnings below 20 billion. So let's take a look at a historical snapshot on coin market cap here from January 1st. And a number of your favorites here have since seen 100x growth. So take a look back down that list. A number of those coins that are household names in the crypto community are a long way down this list. Well done to anyone that took a punt in this space, took the time to learn and read about cryptocurrency and invest in the first half of the year. You've been greatly rewarded. So the first real news event that started to give legitimacy to this space was Japan adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. And those retailers and businesses that started accepting Bitcoin saw a pickup in growth. You know, tourists, everyone spending their Bitcoin at these businesses after Japan's economy has been stagnant for such a long time. It was a noticeable impact, certainly made headlines for a lot of people that were calling Bitcoin a speculative, you know, dark net currency that a country of note was now using this as, as legal tender. We then saw price premiums in different countries as those Asian markets started to pick up. So China, South Korea, financially suppressed countries, you know, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is trading at a massive, you know, 25% premium in some instances, 2,850 a career at the time when other, you know, Western exchanges were still around the $2,000 mark. We then had the flash crash. So, GDAX exchange, Coinbase's institutional exchange, the entire order book got wiped out by you know, one sell order and then all the positions being li li liquidated and margin called drove the price almost down to zero here. A theme that I think we're gonna see a move away from towards these decentralized exchanges to some degree for more tech savvy users in 2018 as a number of exchanges are having issues, particularly recently here in Australia with banks and financial institutions that you have to deal with the on-ramps and off-ramps um, getting into the cryptocurrency world. We then saw the first really hotly debated hard fork. So for a couple of years, we had this debate in this space about how we're gonna scale the network and it push came to shove and there was a small group of people that decided enough's enough, we're doing eight megabyte blocks they hard forked a way to create a new coin called Bitcoin Cash. So look, I won't dive into the politics of that too much. It has surprised a number of people, the, the price it's been able to reach and the percent of um, market cap it has been able to capture. But that certainly started this phenomenon of ongoing hard forks. So we look down the list here, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond, but now we just see Fork after fork, a theme is going to continue in 2018. Think of this as almost a new way to ICO, as Jimmy Song and I spoke about in that interview. So something I think is definitely going to continue throughout 2018. The next thing I want to talk about is Ethereum. So we saw the rise of the ICO. Ethereum grew exponentially in price, but also the ICOs and the projects launching on the Ethereum platform, raising funds in terms of Ethereum. And we saw projects, you know, there was a few in 2016 and 15. So, you know, we saw last year Digex and the Dow, but a number of these coins now, 21,000 ERC20 token contracts on top of Ethereum at present. A lot of these getting hundreds of millions of dollars in a matter of minutes. I certainly think we're in an ICO bubble of some degree and that's all gonna cool off a little bit in 2018 and people are certainly gonna be more selective about what coins and projects they invest in next year. And whether or not a lot of these um, smaller tokens are deserving of these huge market caps, um, especially when they first launched, we've gotta remember that these are small, risky, cutting edge technology tech projects where things can go wrong. Jamie Dimon was then making the headlines um, in September calling Bitcoin a fraud. This rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. 
The price has since appreciated greatly. We saw JP Morgan subsidiaries actually buying Bitcoin after he said this. So this is you know, pretty contentious issue. Kicking Bitcoin while it's down. September was certainly a bad month for the price and the news. So next up we had China shutting down exchanges, issuing those closure orders to stop trading completely by the 30th of September. Those exchanges have been responsible for a large percentage of Bitcoin and all cryptocurrency volume. So a lot of people are saying that, hey, is this the end? This is really bad news. Is this going to start to happen in other countries? Then we had South Korea follow suit, cracking down on ICOs. And we certainly saw the price um, nosedive after all this happened. It created a lot of FUD, so fear and uncertainty, particularly to that you know, wide range of new users to this space who didn't know what this meant. They weren't able to break down how bad this news was. And the price fell hard um, and has since recovered. So next up, we saw a lot of celebrities endorsing ICOs and different cryptocurrencies. So I think the price peaked the same week as Paris Hilton tweeted about a project. So, you know, Floyd Mayweather, we've had John McAfee since with coin of the day, coin of the week. I certainly think that this is not healthy for the cryptocurrency space. It doesn't encourage natural growth of these projects, um, allowing them to develop along um, their roadmap and tick their goals with celebrities pumping the price. Something I think the SEC and other governments and regulatory bodies are going to crack down on in 2018. We then had exponential user growth in this space by this stage in November. So Coinbase added 100,000 users in one day, surging interest, a number of exchanges were struggling to keep up with the demand of people you know, getting their documents verified, opening accounts, getting money into those accounts, getting verified and buying. But we saw exponential user growth in all these social media platforms. So cryptocurrency Reddit here, I remember when this was just in a few thousand readers, it's now up to hundreds of thousands of readers. We saw the same for you know, Facebook groups, Slack channels, all those sort of social media get togethers of people wanting to talk about, read and absorb knowledge from the other people that have been in this space longer than them. We certainly saw a huge influx of new people into the crypto space. We then had that whole debate about SegWit and the 2X, the second part of that hard fork. And Again, I don't want to dive into the politics, but the community couldn't reach consensus. The 2X part was called off. Again, this was a lot of relief for people that were waiting to see what, were, what was going to happen. And the markets really started to run hard after this was called off and basically the green light. But this did mean that there, we have seen you know, a bit of a backlog of transactions. The network is certainly congested. We're waiting for more people to upgrade. Um, to this to the segwit addresses and start using that so you know coinbase and a few of the large exchanges and wallet providers we really want people to start to implement segwit and clear that backlog of transactions in the memory pool and scaling is going to be a hot topic for bitcoin ethereum and all cryptocurrencies again in 2018 we then saw the arrival of futures so wall street had its first real way to you know get its teeth, sink its teeth into Bitcoin. So CME launched futures trading, CBOE then followed suit. A lot of people worried about, is this bad now that you know the, the big boys at Wall Street control Bitcoin? But price actually rose to over $20,000 on the first day of trading. It has since pulled back a little bit. You know The jury's still out as to whether or not this is overall a good thing for the crypto community, especially because these are cash settled. So no underlying Bitcoin is actually traded. This is all just speculative um, for the Wall Street players. The other thing we'd started to notice by this stage is hedge funds, investment funds, and, and money managers starting to get demand from their customers and say, look, we want in on this space. So this is Mike Novogratz. He was the first sort of you know, hedge fund manager that really said that, hey, this space is real. This is legitimate. So he's opening a $500 million cryptocurrency hedge fund. I'm having him on the channel soon to interview can't wait to pick his brain and talk about what he sees going on in this institutional space with over 100 hedge funds in 2017 announcing that they're going to start investing in cryptocurrency. So that's going to be a huge theme, that institutional smart money investing in Bitcoin, Ethereum and all good projects throughout 2018. The last few days we've seen South Korea tighten controls and again this is similar to China and what we saw that they want to framework and rules and regulations in 
place to protect their citizens. So, you know, they're not outright banning crypto or anything like that, like a lot of the mainstream media make it out to be. They just want to have control. There's a lot of fraudulent projects and scams out there. They want to have regulations in place to protect everyone. Um, so the appropriate measures are taken for investors that want to get into this cryptocurrency space. A lot of hacks this year, as always. You know, a lot on the Ethereum network. ICOs being hacked with Coindash here. The parity wallet breach of the multi-sig wallet. Enigma project. Tether being hacked. You know, Tether a lot itself was in the news this year about do they have that one-to-one -one backing? What's the relationship with Bitfinex? Again, I, I can't wait for the maker die to bring out their stable coin. Certainly, Tether are going to launch other other backed tethers and different euro backed and all that as well so definitely that stable coin token is something that this space really wants um, and, and clear and transparency the whole point of the blockchain so we want audits of tether we want it we want it to be 100 percent clear that it is one-to-one -one backed something again that we're going to see change in that space in 2018. that brings us to the current price of bitcoin Tremendous growth as I've seen in those prices since the start of the years, but this leads me into my predictions for 2018. So I want to start off with the Bitcoin dominance. So, you know, since I've been in this space, Bitcoin was always around 90% or more dominance, but this year really saw the rise of Ethereum and it was certainly due to that scaling debate. So people saying, you know, how is Bitcoin going to scale? It's sort of at this dead end debate. And then Bitcoin did do the hard forks of some sort. Segwit, the Lightning Network provided some hope to the community, but certainly, you no. Know, but even though the dominance is dropping, the total market cap is still growing exponentially. So it was in some ways inevitable. We're going to see other cryptocurrencies grow. We had this sort of hype about the flipping, whether or not Bitcoin was Ethereum was going to overtake the Bitcoin total market cap. Look, I think Ethereum, um, Bitcoin is really at a crossroads now, and it, it's got to determine its own future. So. If Bitcoin can scale at the moment, you know, it can become that digital money as well as what it started off to be, that, that cash transaction for anywhere globally, cheap transactions, because at the moment it's certainly heading down the path of being a good store of value. So it's certainly going to continue to grow. And I, if we get a Bitcoin ETF next year, more people viewing it as a store of value, it's going to go up in price. But I'd really love to see Bitcoin implement Lightning Network and scale and really regain that dominance. But if it doesn't, I certainly think that Bitcoin dominance runs the risk of continuing to decline and other coins such as Litecoin can become that method of online cash and payment. You know, Ethereum can continue to grow. There's hot competition out there from another projects working hard to scale. So I really hope Bitcoin doesn't have a stalemate um, where they don't develop and, and grow during the next 12 months. The next thing that I think is going to happen is the recognition that these blockchain technology projects are, are individual projects. So I've recently made that video about top 10 projects, I think, for next year. A number of other good projects I've covered throughout this year on the channel. But that correlation that everything is just, you know, related to Bitcoin and everything's a cryptocurrency. Here's this Bitcoin altcoin correlation video I made throughout the year. And everything is showing a positive correlation to Bitcoin. Whatever Bitcoin does, these other coins roughly follow. Next year, I certainly think that we're going to see some coins move independently of the Bitcoin price. You know, why would these individual projects, you know, Power Ledger, Horizon State, Funfair, why should they be going up and down if Bitcoin goes up and down? They're in completely different industries, changing, changing the world in different ways. So certainly I think correlation to Bitcoin is going to break in 2018 for a number of these quality projects. The other thing that I think is gonna come as a surprise to people is the Ethereum futures. So a lot of people are talking about, you know, the Bitcoin ETF, and yes, I certainly think that's probably a likelihood of happening, and even more than one Bitcoin ETF, that's gonna be great for the space, but I'm looking for the surprises. So are we gonna get Ethereum futures and Ethereum ETF, maybe even Litecoin? Who knows if Roger Ver pushes his agenda to try and get a Bitcoin cash fund or all those things remain to be seen. That's where I think we're going to see the big growth for the things that the market hasn't yet priced in. The other thing I just want to touch on is a bit of a controversial topic. I think we're going to see a lot of these guaranteed return 
style investments get cracked down on. So bit petite, you know, I haven't followed this real closely, but a lot of people saying they haven't heard anything back now in, in you know, weeks and weeks from bit petite that guaranteed these high returns. I think a lot of these guaranteed return projects are gonna be stamped out by certain governments and jurisdictions. The fact that they, they've got to the point where there's an, you know thousands of people investing in these all thinking they're gonna get these guaranteed returns the large, law of large numbers says that they're not going to be able to keep up these exponential numbers and this growth. And I think a number of these guaranteed returns um, go belly up in 2018. Finally, I think that Bitcoin is going to have to be acknowledged by central banks and governments. So a lot of them are still saying, that, hey, it's not really on our radar, too small to threaten any global economy or threaten our monetary policy decision making process. I think next year, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency really start to become a hotly debated topic by governments and central banks. So 2017 was certainly the year of mass awareness, but I think next year is the year of mass adoption where people start using cryptocurrency more in their everyday lives. These unique individual projects get recognized and invested in by institutional money, and more people start to realize that, hey, this isn't just a speculative investment. Blockchain technology is gonna change the world in a lot of ways. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Please hit like, share these videos around, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers.